Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, from our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text upon which we base our meditation today is in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 11 to 16, and 23 to 24. As God tells Ezekiel, tell this to the people. For this is what the sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There, there they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is God's word. Dear friends in Christ, why did I want to tell you I was done with my shopping? To make myself feel great, you feel jealous, feel bad. Did it work? These are interesting days. I always find it interesting this time of the year. The holiday season, the commercials, the, the watching out for the other drivers as I drive anywhere. I still remember, it's, it's embedded in my mind, a Christmas when I had my first car. I had a 1969 Mustang Mach 1, flat black hood, 351 Cleveland engine four speed, 60 tires in the back, 70s in the front, so I had the big Shelby's and I had the little tires in the front. Apple green, did I tell you that already? Driving past the mall and a little girl, 16 years old, who only had her license for one month, came out with a Vega and smashed me. First in the front and then she panicked and smashed me again in the back by hitting the gas pedal. In fact, the cop said, who's the other person that hit you? She hit me twice. So I avoid malls ever since then. Never want to go near them because people are crazy. I'd rather drive the commuters every morning back and forth. But they know what they're doing. They may drive fast. They may change lanes at the last second. But you know they're going to do that. And so you just get in the groove and drive with the rest of them. It's those people that come in on the way home when they're mixed in with the shoppers. That's the crazy part. I'd stay at work till like 9 o'clock at night before I'd come back with those people out there. It's a time when we're supposed to be happy. And yet it's, I'll read articles about this as the most depressing time of the year for some people. And it's because they're of expectations. Sometimes I guess we have low expectations like mine. I've got my shopping done because I only buy stuff for my wife and she does the rest. Some expectations I got to find the right gift for the right person on the right day at the right price. And if I don't, the rest of my day is ruined. Today is Christ the King Sunday, and the gospel lesson is Jesus getting crucified. What sense does that make for the mood that we're supposed to have today? The resurrection from the dead. The resurrection's a great idea, but dying is not a great idea. And it is that mix. Ezekiel gives these wonderful words from God to his people who are where? In Babylon, because they've been defeated in a war, and they're refugees. And they're not in Jerusalem, and their temple got leveled. Solomon's temple is no more. All that gold, all that gold that lined the entire outside of the building, it's gone. It's been destroyed. If they know anything about it, Jerusalem's a pile of rocks. The whole city's a pile of rocks. They just destroyed every single wall they could. 
The only wall left was the foundation of Solomon's temple with those 20 foot long blocks that were like 10 feet wide and 10 feet high, the Wailing Wall, which if you go to Google, you can see what it looks like because they built on that foundation, but the foundation was still there. They couldn't knock those over, but everything else in the city, every wall, every house, the palaces and the temples, the Babylonians just leveled to just rub it in. And Ezekiel is trying to get these people to say, be happy. God loves you. He's going to take care of you. See how well he's been doing it lately? But he means it. He means it. And as I go through this season of celebrating Thanksgiving already and thinking of the many blessings I have, I know my brain can go down a path of some things I don't have. My parents are gone. The celebration I had as a kid with all of my cousins is not the way we do it anymore. A bunch of things aren't the same. And at the same time, I remind myself just by watching a simple Charlie Brown special on Wednesday night, those pilgrims who lost half of their adult friends in that first year on the voyage or after they landed still celebrated a thing we call Thanksgiving. Because they were. They were thankful that God had brought them to this place where they could worship him the way they thought God wanted to be worshipped. And their friends that had died, they knew those friends were already in heaven. Those friends were better off than they were. So there was no crying over them or lamenting them. The kids were alive. The Native Americans they met were helping them survive. And they were going forward, thank God. And so with even something as simple as that, I think about what should my mood have been on Thanksgiving, no matter if my football team won or whether or not the turkey was made correctly and the stuffing was just the right type of moisture or the pumpkin pie was the right nice of spice or whatever. Yeah, those are all little extra luxuries compared to what I know is most important. And that's what I think of with these lessons today as I go forward. As I go forward to the 28 shopping days left for Christmas, that we've survived Black Friday already by sleeping in and making pancakes and sausages about 8.30 on Friday morning. That's what I did. Now I did go to Walmart about two in the afternoon because I did not need to get some Legos for the mission to the children, needed to do that. But by two in the afternoon, all the other people were dead. It was an easy place to go to at Walmart on Sunday. There was no line even at the checkout by two in the afternoon. So I guess good timing on my part. Then we had to deal with what was yesterday, small business Saturday. So made sure I visit, I was gonna visit the train shop to make sure I helped them out, but I'll do that Tuesday of this week. They'll, they'll think it's still okay if it's a couple days late. And tomorrow is cyber attack Monday, right? So what's today, give to church Sunday? Okay, that'll work. And one of the things I wanted to look at as I thought of that, the blessings that God has given us, is, is the blessings that you have been doing through your offering envelopes this year too for our congregation. When you look at those numbers in the bulletin that we're a, a head on current expense, is something wrong with that? And missions is down a little bit, but we didn't count Thanksgiving's offering yet. So once we count Thanksgiving's offering, which all goes to missions, that's going to be a plus too. And we've got five Sundays yet to go this year before the end of the year. So is it wrong to tell you you don't have to give anymore? Just give what you normally give on a regular Sunday and we'll be fine at the end of this year. We don't need you to double up or triple up on some Sunday because you've been slackers so far. No, I'll tell you the truth. Just keep giving what you've been giving. Then we'll be fine as a church. And I want to thank you also for the extra stuff that you have done in the times when we were asked for it. Back in September and October after those hurricanes hit Houston and Florida and, and Puerto Rico, we said, would you give a little extra to help the Christian Aid and Relief Fund? And this congregation came up with $6,000. Do you realize how many people are in this building? Would you imagine $6,000 being put together in a few weeks by you? That's awesome. Then we heard one of our sister churches up in Lacey burned down on a Sunday. And so now they're worshiping in a public school down the road and don't know when it's all going to get back to normal. And we said, would you do something for them? And all of a sudden, $1,000 
appears in our collection through your gifts because you want to tell them we might not know you even though they're our nearest Wells congregation to the north of us <laughs> but they are 120 miles away you came up with a thousand dollars and we'll send that up to them this week thank you thank you for your gifts thank you for your generosity thank you for your sharing so in the days ahead I don't want to put any extra pressure on you as far as the church is concerned you've done well thank you so if you get other things in the mail asking for extra money from them you can help them out if you want we're doing okay because you've already been doing wonderfully in sharing with God and his church but there still are the things ahead to think about how am I going to get Christmas to be the best ever how am I going to get this done in time or make this occasion or this party what dress am I going to wear what tie am I going to buy all these other things I'm assuming that most of you are old enough now you've gotten past that. It's the younger ones really I'm talking to right now. Just forget it and realize it's not that important. It's not that important. The great thing about the Pacific Northwest is we're casual wherever we go. As far as our clothes. <laughs> ah, and other stuff. What's important at this time of the year? Well, I still don't have to personally throw stuff away. I mean... I'm going to get lights on the outside of the parsonage this week. They will be up by the first Sunday in Advent, which will be next Sunday. We will have our beautiful wreath hanging here for celebration with its greenery on and the candles and the joy of reminding ourselves that we got a few weeks to go till Christmas. And I will be getting a big tree for my living room and my Christmas train will be going under it. And all my other decorations and other stuff will be going throughout the house. The lights in the basement, the glitter, the garland and everything else is going to be erected, put up, attached, hooked or something in the next couple of days because I still want to enjoy something special. Something extra. But I wanted to remind myself of my blessings from my loving God. Not lights for the sake of lights. Not garland for the sake of garland. Not glitter for the sake of glitter. But the reminder that that tree is an evergreen tree and it's pointing to where I'm going to go for eternity. And the lights remind me that Jesus is the light of the world. And the ornaments remind me of my blessing, especially all those ornaments that I put out on the tree that were made by my girls when they were in school. Those go on the front. Because those are my big blessings. The paper ones, the clay ones, the pictures of them in kindergarten. And will I get a little choked up? Yeah. Is that okay? Yes, it is. There's good reasons to get choked up and good reasons to think about that. Not that, oh, no, they grew up on me and now they don't love me anymore. No, they were cute then. We had a wonderful relationship then. They got older. They're independent now. But we still have a wonderful relationship. That's the blessings that I think of during the season. Blessings I hope you think of. The crucifixion, yes, it fits today. Because it reminds us, just like that cross, is, which is up there all the time, reminds us that God the Father loves us so much he sent his one and only son to die. We celebrate the birth, but his mission was to die. His mission was to live the perfect life we're not capable of and then to get punished in our place to show us how much he loved us. So the Father would show us how much he loved us. The Son would show us how much he loved us. And that's what, what the Son is doing when we think about, yes, I don't like all the images that are in that gospel lesson this morning. They make me cringe. The crown of thorns. Being spit on. I mean, the calling of names is one thing. But the spitting, was that necessary? Was the crown of thorns necessary? Was hitting him with the staff necessary? To a degree, God wanted me to remind myself, you're a sinner. You're a filthy sinner. You don't deserve a white robe. You should be wearing scuzzy stuff. But I love you. And I want you to be in my heavenly home. You can't do that on your own. You can't make yourself better. You can't clean yourself up by yourself. So I need to do this for you. That's why I sent my son. 
That's why we worship the Son. We worship Jesus to show our appreciation for what he did do for us. That I know, I know the Christmas present I have from him, which I won't open till I die, is awesome. And it's free. I didn't earn it. It wasn't deserving. But it's mine. And you have one too. The gift of eternal life Jesus has given to you and to me. And that's what Ezekiel's trying to get across to his people even at this time when they're living as refugees. God still cares for us. He still loves us. We might not have a fantastic earthly life at this moment. We're not in Jerusalem. We're not in Israel. We're living as foreigners among all these other foreigners. But God knows exactly where we are and who we are. And he's going to bring us to his wonderful home. So when he says, I myself, I myself, I'm not going to send pastors or I'm not going to send bishops or presidents of synods to come find you. I'm going to make sure that you know that I know where you are. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. I will rescue them from all the places where they are scattered. I will bring them out and bring them into their own land and I will pasture them and I will tend them. I myself will tend my sheep. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. If any message comes out of this Christ the King Sunday, it's remember this, God loves you. God himself loves you. Not just thinks about you, not just likes you a little bit, but, but he loves you. He tried to get the people to think about the good old days. That's why he used a sort of a figure of speech when he says, I will place, them, place over them one shepherd, my servant David. And to us it'd be like, David, why is David important? Well, to the Jews he was extremely important. Those were the good old days. Those were the glory days. Those are the days when every nation feared them as a nation. And they never had to worry about war or enemies. That's when their borders were big, their economy was strong, and David was a pretty cool leader. And that was 400 years ago for them. And so Ezekiel throws that in to remind them, think about that. But they knew he was really talking about somebody else. And that was the son of David, because they knew about the prophecies, they knew about the Messiah, that somebody was going to be grander and more glorious. And if you want to think about the good old days, think about something even bigger. That's hard to you do because you have to use your imagination about how wonderful heaven is going to be. In your imagination, what's the best part? No sickness, no disease, no sorrow. Everybody get along with everybody else? No politics? Mine's just I get to be young again. That's mine. You can throw all that other stuff in there. I still have all that other stuff in there. I can still get sick from time to time. You make me young again, I'm good with everything else. Everything else after that's a bonus. You make me 22 again so I can play shortstop and hit, hit the ball a ton and swing a golf club without aching. You give me that, that's my number one. You can have a different number one. You don't have to have that one. That's mine. But use your imagination. If you know that God loves you, and you're being told again to remember God loves you and what he wants to do for you just to get you through this life to the next one, use that imagination and say, what could heaven be like? If I have a loving God who's making a perfect place to live, how's my life going to be different today and then? And then say, already thank you in advance. Because you know it's going to come true. And you know you're going to be blessed. Because the almighty, all-powerful God wants you to be happy. When you try and buy a Christmas gift for somebody else, what are you trying to accomplish? You're just trying to be even? Hope your gift was the same price as their gift to you. Hopefully they don't take it back the day after Christmas. What do you want them to do? 
You want a smile and a big hug? You can do that easily with grandsons. I got it made. That's easy. That's why I let Lynn pick out her own gifts, because I don't even bother trying to do that anymore. Right size, right color, right style, me, pick those things out. I gave up on that a long time ago. But if I was able to do that, pick out exactly the right size, right style, color, and everything else, and surprise her with it, what would I see on her face? A look of awe. But I don't know, I can't do that. So I let her pick it out, because then I at least get a smile. It's something she wanted. God has the ability to give us more than we can dream of. And he wants us to smile when we see that gift of our life in heaven. And uh, we won't be disappointed. Amen.